What up though? I'm Jay Will, aka Black Dad, and let's say this video is gonna be a little bit different. <laughs> I'm gonna be a little more uh, naked and exposed in this one. Basically, I wanna talk about the uh, last few months of unschooling. So, we're 90 days in. Unschooling. What are my thoughts on it? I like it a lot. Um, I think what I'm supposed to say is, yeah! You're an unschooler, you're an unschooler, everybody's an unschooler. Yeah, I don't quite feel like that. <laughs> if I had to give unschooling a grade, it'll probably be an 84. Strong B, you know. I guess I should maybe say uh, something higher, you know, but I'm trying to be honest. Uh, hopefully the powers of the unschooling don't, you know. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Sorry for the tiger moms out there. You're like, oh, low B, click. <laughs> Turn off the video. Unschooling. What are my thoughts on it? I think it's cool and I like it. And it's so much that I'm still learning from it, but it's difficult. <laughs> it's, there's a uh, trying times. There's something about just how different and going against the grain unschooling is. And even with all the support from my family, from friends, from new friends, from people literally on the other side of the world in other countries and just reaching out and helping me in my journey. Even with that, it's still difficult because that day to day is very different for everybody. And that day to day is very different even within my house. And we're all doing this together. And sometimes tensions get high <laughs> between, you know, one or the other, you know, and all of the above, but nothing easy is worth having anyway. So, and I'm a firm believer of that. So it's not like, I'm not saying this as a, well, I'm stepping away from unschooling. <laughs> Let me try something else. Ah. Yeah, that's, it's not like that. I'm more in a place where it's like, I'm just want to do a fair assessment of it, of my experience with it so far. About a year ago, I was introduced by, by a friend to this idea of unschooling. As soon as I heard it, I'm the type of person, you know, I want to do my research. I want to go on Google. I want to look up stuff, look for articles, look for TV programming, documentaries, um, YouTube University and see what's on there. But I'll be frank, when I went to YouTube in particularly, when I went to Google, it wasn't a lot. I, I didn't, I was, I guess I was expecting to find a lot more. I found books, I found podcasts, super beneficial. And I felt like it was so helpful. Actually, I'll put down in the description below some of those podcasts and books that really helped me in my initial introduction to unschooling. I didn't find a lot of, you know, how do you do this? Like as a parent day to day. And I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're either a parent or you plan to be at some point or you just love me. But yeah, you know, as a parent, it's, it's, it's stressful. It's hard. It's long days. It's it long, longer nights. And you just need practical things. Like, what do I do when this happens? What do I do when this happens? When my daughter and or my son has croup, um, this whooping cough that sounds like a seal, what do I do? You go online, Google it, go to YouTube, and they say, turn on your shower, close the door, put a towel in the crack of the door, and pat them on the back and hold them in that room. Like that's a practical thing that you could just go to and you get an answer online. Unschooling, you don't really get that. Like it, you don't get a lot of that. Like you get very inspiring and philosophical and even scientific things that help you understand about learning and and parenting and your yourself and your children but sometimes you just i just want like man what do i do what's the turn on the shower and close the bathroom door version of unschooling and to be frank that's actually why i wanted to start this channel the number one thing for me right now is when to draw the line i'm going to tell you a little story <laughs> So my son just turned three. So the issue is he doesn't want to learn how to swim. He wants to do things his way. He's very hard headed and stubborn, but he's very determined and also independent. So it's, I don't want to break his determination and resilience to get him to do the things that we want him to do. Right. So I allow that hard headedness, is that a word? Mm. But I allow that hard headedness to kind of live within our relationship, within our household, right? Because I want him to be autonomous. I want him to have that confidence in himself. And he's like that with everything, whether it's, oh, I want to wear an ice cream shirt. Or I was like, bro, we, you wore the ice cream shirt yesterday. It's dirty. 
you can't wear the ice cream shirt. Well, I don't want to wear the ice cream shirt. And we're going back and forth like, bro, like, what are you going to wash the ice cream? Okay, wash the ice cream shirt <laughs> if you want to wear it. So it's like those kind of things. And even when he, before he could talk, you know, he like his food, like, you know, he needs his food a certain way. It has to be a certain texture. You know, he don't want it a certain color. It's like, no, I want the yellow yogurt. Literally, the yogurt has a tint of yellow in it. And he calls it the yellow yogurt. He's just so particular about how he wants things. So we live in South Florida. And in South Florida, the leading cause of death for kids is, you guessed it, drowning. In our house, we're blessed to have a pool in our backyard. And actually, our neighbor has a pool to our left and our neighbor has a pool to our right. So <laughs> we're surrounded by death traps <laughs> for our young children. So my daughter um, knows how to swim. I mean, she's six and she swims like she's 10 or 12. All right, she's amazing. Speaking on a little bit more my daughter. My daughter, she's a pleaser. You know, she'll do almost anything we ask. So when we say you need to learn how to swim, she was like, okay. You know, she'll just do it, you know? And uh, my son, he was like, you need to learn how to swim. Now, I want the ice cream shirt. <laughs> I was like, bro, the ice cream shirt is dirty. We need to learn how to swim. You know, my wife, she's an excellent swimmer. And she's trying to teach him how to swim. And he won't do it because it's not the way he wants it. So we can't teach him, but we have to because we live in South Florida with pools all around us. We had to make a call. Literally from this moment that I'm making this recording, a week before, we had a swim instructor come. We're unschoolers. As you may know, unschoolers are self-directed education. We want our kids to have autonomy in their learning. We want them to have control and to be able to pick and choose. And that has all these amazing effects, psychological, emotional, hormonal, all these amazing effects for them to choose what they want to learn. That is beautiful. And I love it. Thank you for every book. <laughs> Thank you for every author, every podcast. I get it. But we live in South Florida. How am I supposed to do the main thing, which is keep my kids safe if he doesn't want to learn how to swim and he's surrounded by pools? So we had to make a call and we forced it. We call a swim teacher and she's amazing. Miss Natalie, she's awesome. So Miss Natalie comes last week. You know, I'm just, I'm a weekend. Like this is literally fresh off the presses. <laughs> There's no holding back. This is my therapy right now. I ain't got no counselor. So I got y'all. We have her come in to teach him to swim. And you know, I have a conversation with him before that, hey, someone's coming over. They're gonna help you learn how to swim. All this kind of stuff, trying to prep, you know, cause I know his environment and his prep and his lead to it is the most important thing for him. And I'm trying to do all that stuff for him with this. And I mean, it's a it's a scream fest. I mean, the whole time, like he doesn't want to do it. And he's screaming. He's kicking Miss Natalie, the sweetest lady. She's amazing. She's calm. She's collected. She doesn't, you know, freak out. She's not like, I can't do this. You know, she she's patient with him and she just has him to relax. I'm trying to use gentle parenting. That's another journey I'm on now is trying to be more gentle with my parenting. And he's trying to communicate something that he needs or wants. And this is the only way he can get that out. So I'm trying to understand those needs and wants and desires. But at the same time, and I've learned this from a few things I've read and listened to with gentle parenting, it's not, oh, you just give them what they want. You got to let them know, hey, we need to do this. We, th And this is why. And that's part of it. I, I guess that's my difference in my unschool approach. And I'm not even sure if it is that different, to be frank with you. But when it comes to the point when I have to draw that line in the sand, I'm going to tell them why. And I'm going to explain it to them. Whether it's self-directed or not, whether they want it or not, whether they're OK with it or not, certain things, I just I feel like I have to teach them. And I felt like the swimming was one of them. So Miss Natalie um, has him the first day. You know, he's basically screaming the whole time, not listening to her. She just basically just has him in the water trying to console him. So Miss Natalie comes over the next day. Day two, he's crying the whole time, but he's listening. She says, move your feet. He moves his feet. She says, blow bubbles out your nose. He blows bubbles out his nose. She says, duck your head. He ducks his head. The whole time he's crying. <sighs> ducks his head. <sighs> Kicking his feet. Like it's like the whole time he's screaming and crying. But he's listening. He's listening to her and he's following instructions. Day three, which is the next day. So this is three consecutive days. Screaming lava, crying, listening. Day three, something happens. 
He is listening. He doesn't cry. He doesn't seem excited. There's not that joy for doing it, but he's paying attention and he's listening. And by the end of it, Miss Natalie leaves and he proceeds to request to stay in the pool. My daughter, she gets her bathing suit, she goes in with them. They're in the pool for two and a half, three hours after Miss Natalie's lesson. And I'm like, wait, what? What is going on? This is the same kid who two days ago was screaming and crying like the pool was lava. And now he can't get out. He don't want to get out. Wrinkled up fingers and everything. I'm just having a ball. So much joy he had in the pool. Friday, this time he goes in the pool with Miss Natalie, it's joy. He's having fun, he's excited to see Miss Natalie, he's doing all the stuff he's listened to, he's enjoying himself, he's smiling, he's thumbs up in me, blah, blah, blah. Then after she leaves, wants to stay in the pool another few hours. So I'm thinking, wait, is this a flaw in unschooling? Because we're supposed to be self-directed. He did not <laughs> direct this at all. We fought him with this. We pushed him through something he didn't want to do. And now he gets so much joy out of it and he loves it. Coming to this week, he's done three lessons this week as well. And he's swimming. It's crazy. So I'm thinking, did I do something wrong on the unschooling side? And I'm actually interested in unschooling families and parents and, and coaches. Like, help me with this because I'm for real. This is my therapy right now. Was I right in what I did? I saw and I'm seeing so much joy in him now with swimming. Was I wrong for the way I did it? Was the approach wrong? And maybe this is a horrible reference, but there's this episode of The Cosby Show that I remember. Sorry, don't cancel me. So in this episode of The Cosby Show, Cliff Huxtable, Bill Cosby, is meeting his daughter, Vanessa's fiance, for the first time. The problem is Vanessa never mentioned dating someone and then is surprising her dad with this information. So Cliff Huxtable goes through this elaborate metaphor describing an amazing meal cooked to perfection. You can smell it, can't you? Yeah. Can you smell the potatoes? Yes, sir. Smell the mushrooms. Yes, sir. Sauté. Smell good. Mm, boy. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, sir. All right. Now, I'm going to present it to you, right? I go over. I don't get a, a plate. Uh -huh. I take the garbage can lid. And I turn it upside down after taking it off of the garbage can. I take your steak, your potatoes, and your sautéed mushrooms, and I give it to you. Not too appetizing, is it? It's in the presentation. That's the way she brought you here, on a garbage can lid. <laughs> so figuring out this line in the sand, because he loves swimming now. But did we present it to him in such a way that it has some long lasting or negative effects on him emotionally or mentally or his feeling of authority or his feeling of autonomy. Like what is his thought process with this? Does he start to think that the things that he's learning have to come from us now instead of him having that resilience that he had before, instead of him having that independence that he's had from birth, did we just stifle that from him? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that we live in South Florida and the leading cause of death for children is drowning. Number two, reading. My daughter came to me, we told her we were unschooling. They were ecstatic. They were like, yeah, playground every day. They were, they were stoked. They were so happy, right? And we tested it and, you know, we were de-schooling a little bit and, you know, we were kind of going with the flow with it. So my daughter, you know, she was in amazing Montessori school in pre-K. She was learning how to read. To be honest, she was doing well. You know, those little books, you know, the little Clifford books and stuff. She could read those books. You know, it would take 15, 20 minutes to read an eight page book. But, you know, it's still she was getting it. She understood it. She was comprehending. She was killing her sight words. You know, she was she was there. But then we uh, allowed her to be self-directed and we gave her a choice and we said, hey, do you want to continue this? Like, I, I know we're doing it, but I don't want you to do this because you feel like you're forced. You remember I said, my daughter is a pleaser. She's always going to try to do what she feels makes mommy and daddy happy. She's actually always going to try to do what any outsider that she loves or respects to try to make them happy. I want her to have that sense of confidence and self-direction because 
people who are easily swayed to do what people they care about want, they can end up doing very scary things. I always joke, I, I want to keep my baby off the pole. <laughs> um, <laughs> that might get edited. <laughs>process was yeah finished montessori school vpk and then this summer we grinded it on the reading like she gonna be reading them them six seven eight of them books in, in 10 minutes right she's gonna be proficient in reading before she get to kindergarten this is my mind right you know my, my daughter's a rock star she's gonna change the world she might be the president or whatever so that was my first unschool shift even though i was working still even though my wife was working still we still wanted to use the unschool approach as a parent. I actually feel unschooling is a parenting style or approach more than anything, more than a schooling and education approach. I, I think it's just the way you interact with your children and that bond and that relationship and that trust that you build. So this was our first move. So when she tells me, yeah, with my background and my experience and me being an educator and my mom and my thoughts of her and how amazing she is and who she will potentially be and she says, I don't want to learn how to read. I don't want to read. I never want to read. That's what she says. And I was like, oh, okay, here we go. I'm reading this uh, Peter Gray book right now. So uh, hopefully he's right. We allow her. She doesn't want to work on it over the summer. We don't let her work on it. Now we fast forward. I officially retire from teaching. So you have all this in a week before her brother's kicking and screaming. At the end of that week, he's loving swimming. The, the week after he's swimming the pool from side to side. What am I supposed to say? Should I be forcing her to read? Should I be throwing those opportunities out more? I don't know. Like, and I'm trying to figure out, same thing. What's that line in the sand? These are some things um, I'm dealing with and, and struggling with and trying to figure out. Right now, just from the things I've read, the podcasts I've listened to and things like that, I'm not gonna push it because I know that Reading for elementary kids isn't really proficient until third grade anyway, but man, my daughter is 10 years old and doesn't know how to read and she's still on this, I don't want to learn how to read thing. And I know there's homeschoolers where that's the case. Like I've read about it and I've heard that they've done amazing things but beyond. Taught themselves how to read in a, a couple months and reading on a, you know, reading on a level higher than kids their age, you know, in a few months I've, I've read and heard about these things. But then you also think, are those outliers? Was that the norm? And then recently I got a comment from somebody who talked about their journey in homeschooling and how they felt like they wished their parents pushed them a little more on math. And, and I think about that a few times when I know someone who didn't quite want to do something, for some reason fell in love with it later on and they felt like they wished their parent was a little more pushy toward it early on. I just want my kids to be the best versions of themselves. Literally pray that every night to help me make decisions to help them be the best versions of themselves. I want them to be happy. I want them to live with passion. I want them to live with faith. I want them to live with purpose. Sometimes the unschooling thing feels so up in the air that I'm not sure what to grab onto first. But I guess I've said a lot of negatives with this. So, number three. Hey guys, glad you're still watching. Make sure you like and subscribe our videos. Cause if you do, you better do it now. Cause it's a good time to. Bye. Unschooling has strengthened my relationship with my kids so much. I feel like I have a better understanding of them. I feel like they have a better understanding of me. I have a better appreciation of them. And there's a lesson in so many different things. And I see it. And even if I don't see it, it comes back later and it reveals itself as so much growth that they've had. And like I said, so last year, we basically were unschoolers, even though both of our kids were in the classroom or in the class setting, even though it's virtual or whatever. So this year is the first real, just true unschool. So like, we're not going to school. We've sent our letter of intent. We've withdrawn from school. Like it's not happening anymore. And I've seen, so over the year I saw it, but there was a shift, man. When my kids were at home with me over the summer, even these last few weeks since school has started back, there's been a shift. Like this closeness has gotten, we've gotten tight. 
and I just understand their needs and their wants and their desires and their and their and they understand me more with the reasoning because every time I tell them no, I explain it. And I have the time to explain it. And I give them the time to process it, my explanation. And then sometimes I go back to it and I say, Do you understand why I did this? And those are lessons. I listen and I share and I'm honest and I'm genuine, just like I am here now. And I feel like it's been helpful. Number four, I've talked about this before, but the families, the moms and their kids have been great. The conversations with them have been so fulfilling and beneficial. So if you're doing this unschooling thing, if you're doing this homeschooling thing, meetups, get your meetups, find a circle of people. And sometimes that's a whole thing in itself, actually. Go on to Facebook, go on, and I look for homeschool groups near me, and it's a lot. <laughs> it's all over the place. It's faith-based, strict Christian-based, secular-based. It's radical, it's almost, it's unschooling, it's homeschooling, it's so much stuff. It's really overwhelming. I'm probably in 12 something Facebook groups and it's and I feel like there's a benefit in all of them. But so I don't want to leave, but it's so much information from so many different places and so many different styles of ways of unschooling. There's such a huge spectrum of unschooling, but it's been beneficial because when you lock in with a good mom, they are amazing. The moms that have really helped me at the meetups and the different events I've gone to and suggested events and ones that I've been trying to go to and I haven't been able to go to. Shout out to Kind Academy. I'm definitely going to go to one. Link down below for more information. They've been so patient and so helpful and so amazing. It's been a very refreshing and helpful thing to have in this whole process, you know, having this circle of people that you can rely on and reach out to for help. I don't feel like I'm alone in this. And, you know, we as parents, we're always just trying to do what's right for our children and trying to make those right calls, like I was saying earlier in this video. These moms, they, they've been supportive and they're in their own journeys as well and they've been helpful. And it, it's been great. It's been great. That's one of the things in these first three months that I feel has been a huge benefit to me and I'm so thankful to them.